thank you for tuning in to NTV7 and welcome to Miracle Makers. I'm Shemaine Poo. Last week, I was in awe after meeting with a remarkable woman, a miracle maker as I call her, Dr. Hatini. She is a lady with a big heart and even bigger laughter. And her face just lights up when she talks about the children. And through her, I saw her passion and the determination and the persistency that she has towards helping the children in the Chow Kit area as well as greater part of Kuala Lumpur. And although she faced a lot of difficulties, a lot of red tapes, even danger and heartbreak, she presses on and she has done remarkable things for these children. And I see a great and shining example in her. And this week, I am excited to meet up with the next Miracle Maker. Well, for those who know her, she is a socialite in a high society and she's a lady with many accolades. To top it off, she's a mother of three as well as a director in an international petroleum company. She's none other than Dato Ruby Kong. And for those who also know her, she has been the president of Kachara Soup Kitchen since 2006. I'm eager to learn from her, the knowledge to be able to help out in society and to walk in the footsteps of yet another miracle maker. So behind us, we see all of them getting ready and I'm about to join them now. These are the food. Tonight, I am volunteering my service and I'll be going with the group of volunteers at Kachara Soup Kitchen. And along with me, and that's showing me the ropes, is Dr. Ruby Kong's long-term volunteer, that's Justine. He will bring me around the area of Puduraya and Bukit Bintang to give out food to those who need it. Uncle? Hello, Makan. Here is the nasi. He is not so inclined to talk. We just came back from our rounds of distributing food to the homeless people and according to Justin, the homeless people usually go back to the places where they sleep late at night. So it's actually past midnight, it's been out for several hours. So today we saw about 30 over volunteers and usually every Saturday there are about close to 50 volunteers. So depending on the week, but there are quite a lot of people that come together to help in this effort. So tomorrow, I definitely look forward to meeting with Dr. Ruby Kong to understand why this woman has come out from where she is so high up in the society to want to do this for these people. So I am looking forward to meeting with her. So let's see her tomorrow to ask her all the questions that I prepared for her. So this is the place yes. we come and get the. Actually, we come here out uh, two days. Uh huh. Uh, so I put the sauces is here. And, uh, yeah, the news. Hi. Yes. Hi. Hello, Shami. Hey. Hi, Dato. Thank you so much for meeting with me. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for coming. <laughs> this is uh, where we pick up our food okay. from. Yeah. All right. Let's come take a look. Okay. Great. Thank you, Justine, with an E. <laughs> yeah, he told me just now. So every afternoon, about 120 of them will come here. Some of them will just take the food and they go away, just like a takeaway. Yes. <laughs> and uh, some of them, because they have walked for a very long distance, they will stay here to have their meal. Right. Yeah. And, and uh, they relax here for that as right. well. Yeah. 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 And what happens is that some of them will also bring their dirty laundry. Oh. Uh, so they can do their laundry here, so oh. while having their food. So I see. Yeah, we got three washing machines and three dryers, which they can okay. use. But uh, we will operate it for them. I see. Yeah. Okay, and what prompted you? Being yourself, you know, you're a director of International Petroleum Company. I'm sure you get this very often. Yes. Um, you're a mother of three and you're successful in every single way. But what prompted you to want to do this? What, why did you join this to begin with? <laughs> it was actually the... It was my spiritual guide, his eminent Sam Tukurin Boche, who himself experienced life as a homeless person. So, four and a half years ago, he told a group of us to spend our Saturday nights in a more meaningful way, way in a more yes. beneficial way. 
to um, to serve the homeless because he said that you know when he was walking around town he did notice that there were many homeless people mm -hmm. around we were quite reluctant in the beginning oh <laughs> yes why is that so? for, for selfish reasons, you know, because we are thinking that, wow, well, you know, you know, we're, we're all career women, yes. and um, Saturday is our only night off, mm -hmm. you know, to, to be able to meet up with friends or sometimes for, for entertainment purpose. But he said no. He said, think about it in a in a bigger picture. You know, I'm sure you went through a lot of, you faced a lot of challenges. We did, but it was more of um, security uh, challenges because. When we work with the homeless people, they've been on the streets for so long mm -hmm. and uh, some of them are mentally unstable. Right. Um, it is due to rejection from the society, not yes. being recognized, not even, uh, you know, nobody even know that they exist. Yes. So security was quite uh, an issue for us in the beginning, especially for our volunteers. Right. Because, you know, when, they, when our volunteers come onto the street, you know, they're all very gung-ho and I, all they want to do is to help without yes. sometimes realizing yes, that yes. there could be some danger. So what we do is that um, because of that, we always have a briefing. It is mandatory for first-time volunteers to come for a briefing for almost 45 minutes and we tell them on the do's and the don'ts when right. they go down onto the streets. Right. Yeah. We are the ones that actually go down to the streets to work with the homeless. We yes. really know, yeah. you know, um, their background, you know, why they are in this situation and what help. Yeah, my church particip uh, participated in it as well. I'm sure a lot yeah. of other uh, oh, yes, religious yes. groups, the are. Muslims, the Hindus, the oh, yes. other Buddhists, yeah. and they all come together for this That's right. charity yeah. cause. Because, you know, at the end of the day, you know, hunger is hunger. It doesn't matter from which creed, what religion, what gender you are. Yes. You know? Because when we started, my spiritual guide told us, he said that when you go down to the streets to feed, you feed without discrimination. Yes. That is why our uh, tagline, 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 hunger, hunger knows, knows no barriers. barriers. Because he said if you extract the stomach of a hungry person, it doesn't show you his creed, his religion, his age, his gender. It just shows a very hungry, hungry stomach. Yes. <laughs> so he said, you know, always treat without discrimination. And uh, this is what also in, in our briefing we tell our volunteers, always treat the homeless person with respect. Yes, and also, you know, don't discriminate. Yeah. yeah. For sure, I think you have utmost respect for them because you address them as your clients. Oh yes, yeah. And uh, most of our volunteers also know our clients yeah. uh, by name. Yes, yes. Yeah. I, I saw Justin earlier on. Yes. Yeah. Chatting with some yes. of the regulars that come in, and I see yes. the regular superstar with his poster up front. <laughs> Talking about this center, right. it opened last year. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, how do you go about raising funds? I mean, it looks like you're very well established and a good place. Uh, and I see in there you have. Yeah. Guys stuck to the, to the top <laughs> and you have biscuits. I was doing a mental calculation just yes. now. We have got about 100 packets of our rice. We've been very fortunate. See, what happened was we were doing mobile uh, food distribution for two years plus. Right. And uh, we, only, we were only able to do it every weekend. Yes. Yeah. Because we are volunteer based and usually volunteers can only come in during the weekend. But along the way, we felt that it's quite difficult to do job placement when we're mobile because we were asking the, uh, the the homeless like okay you know you meet us here, here at this spot on this time which day which time <laughs> and sometimes when um our our people go there with our van right. to pick them up they are not there right. and it can be quite frustrating yeah on both parties on our side is that we are not able to help them but on their side is that you know, they're homeless people, they don't, they don't know the time, the day, they don't have a calendar, they don't have a watch. Yes. Correct. So it was very difficult. So we decided that we should get a permanent base, which they can come to us instead of we go to them. So moving from 20 packets a week and now to an amazing 180 packets a day, Wow, and seven days a week? You yes. mentioned a weekend, yes. you give out about what, 750 packets That's a week? That's right, yeah. I see, I see. Because on weekends, what we do is that the volunteers will come in about 8.30, mm -hmm. go through about 45 minutes to an hour of briefing, and then they will do the packing. Mm -hmm. After the packing, we, they are distributed into 12 different groups. Each group will have a team leader, mm -hmm. and they'll be assigned maybe about, depending on the size of the, the, the route, they'll be assigned to about 60 to 70 packets. Bigger routes will have about 100 packets. Per person? Per group. Oh, per, sorry, uh, per, per group. And this group, they will drive down to a designated area, for example, in Chowkit, uh, or Sentong, uh, Masjid Jamik. 
different different areas with their team members right. and they serve in that How area. How do you know who to give the food to? Yes, because we've been, doing, we've been doing this for food. so long yeah. already. So we have a database about 1,500 homeless right. people who are registered. Is We don't just serve the homeless, we also serve the urban poor. Meaning that those whose um, household income household income are below 2,000 ringgit per month, it is very difficult to survive, you know, in, in Clan Valley with, with the, the kind of um, uh, salary. So this is the group that we serve also. I see. Or those who are in between jobs. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, this data that we have, we also share it with our Ministry of uh, Women, Family and Communication because we are the ones that actually go down to the streets to work with the homeless. We yes. really know, yeah. you know, um, their background, you know, why they are in this situation and what help they require. So yes. we share this um, information with our ministry and um, we actually work hand in hand with the ministry. In terms of raising funds, I see you have a packet of food uh, and I see this at the host Yes, of sponsors yes. that have contributed. Mm. Do they usually contribute in terms or in, in kind or in cash? Do you know how all these rice packets came about? Is that you know when our doors open, you know, yes. passers by, you know, they, they they come around and they say that oh, is this a restaurant? And then we explain to them what what we are doing. And then they say, okay, you wait, I'll come back and give you something. And we think like, oh, okay, you know. Right, right. And really, they came back and gave yeah, yeah. And, and this happens very often. That is why we've got amazing, uh, yes, you know, yes. rice packers from different, different places. They also just bring rice yes. to support. Yes, yes. Really sweet. And you know, when we ask for their names to issue them, you know, a receipt, and they're like, no, 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 it's, it doesn't matter. And they'll, some of them will even just drop off on our doorstep and oh. they go off. It's really sweet. Yeah. yeah. And, um, um, some of them, the, those who are working, yes. you know, they, they come by around here, nearby here for lunch. Again, they, they drop by, see what yeah. they're doing, and they'll drop in some loose change to, to right, us. Right. Yes, and this is, it, it is very, you know, to us it is an endorsement of our work and that is, um, you know, morally is very uplifting for our volunteers because it's like, oh, you know, somebody knows that we're doing good work and um, they want to support. Looks like you have everything in place already. How about your volunteers? Yes. I mean, how many volunteers do you get per day or per week? During the weekdays, that's uh, Monday to Friday, when we serve out from this kitchen, occasionally we do get um, volunteers from the corporate sector, meaning right. that it is part of their CSR, CSR program. program. So they come. Mm -hmm. Whereas our other volunteers would come during the weekend on Saturdays, Saturday night runs, we call it our midnight run. Yes. And uh, that's when we have about at least 70 volunteers, 7 zero. I, I think that's quite an amazing figure. Sim you know? uh, familiar faces? Oh. Yes. Um, a lot, many of them are recurring, you know, the comeback. They've been coming back like for the last four years. Yes. Yeah. So. We actually put a cap to the number of volunteers that come every week um, for due to logistics reasons. Mm -hmm. Take baby steps. Don't set goals that are so big that you can't accomplish. Because I always believe that you know it is better to be able to benefit one or two persons rather than not being able to do anything for them. Some of the interviews that you mentioned that one of the reasons that contributed to the success of KSK is because of the help of the media. Yes. You see, as with any NGO, we need a lot to create a lot of public awareness, awareness. for our work, you know. And so we've been very fortunate because um, the press, the media, from day one, they have been very supportive of our work. And it is not just creating the awareness of KSK, it is also when they highlight certain plights of the homeless people, and that's where actually help comes in. And what, what happens is that usually after an article is being published in, in a newspaper or in a magazine, what happens is that the public will call up and say that, hey, I read about this, you know, how can I help? Mm -hmm. And some of them will even um, ask us, oh, I'd like to donate, and uh, where should I send the cheque to? Right. Yeah. Would you agree that most public, most people, they have the heart to want to help? Yes. I think we're very lucky because, you know, we're living in a country where charity is in the mass consciousness of many. I really admire what you've been doing, Dato, and I think I would really want to walk in footsteps that are similar to yours. Uh, if I can just do a fraction of what you're doing, can you give me some advice as to how I can contribute to society 
and be a miracle worker like yourself? <laughs> yes, I always tell people that uh, take baby steps. Don't set goals that are so big that you can't accomplish. Because I always believe that you know it is better to be able to benefit one or two persons rather than not being able to do anything for them at all. So you know at the end of each year, many of us we have our own New Year resolution. Oh, next year I'm going to build an institute that and that can benefit uh, you know, one thousand people. And sometimes these kind of goals are not. Um, able to be accomplished within that 12 months and then you become very disheartened. So I always tell my friends that no, just take baby steps, you know. Come, help, see for yourself. If you like what we're doing, mm -hmm. you know, you can bring in more volunteers and help our work to grow. Or if you feel that, you know, you can benefit in another way, in another society, you know, by all means go ahead. So this is what I think everyone should do is not to set very big goals but uh, set goals which are manageable, get yourself going first right. and then move on from there. Right, okay. I think these are very useful tips that I can definitely follow. Yeah. Okay. Because, you know, in, you know, we're very lucky to be living in a beautiful country like Malaysia where charity is in the mass consciousness mm -hmm. of many. And um, so as long as you're able, you should start with the first step, find your niche and grow up from there. What touches your heart? Yes. Yeah. Right. right. I think that's the next thing that I want to do and hopefully by then when I have a plan in place I can come to you for more advice. Oh definitely. We also have a very comprehensive um, SOP, standard uh, operating, operating procedure, procedure which we have um, given to my friend in uh, Jakarta mm -hmm. and we've also started Kachara Soup Kitchen in Jakarta yes. based on um, our success here and I'm now looking into setting up Kachara Soup Kitchen in Thailand. Oh wonderful. Yes. Okay. Well, keep me in mind for that and perhaps I can contribute in one way or another. I will, certainly. Thank you. Thank you so much for meeting with me today. Thank You've you, You've helped me a lot. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> I find that she herself as well as her dedicated team of staff, whom a few of them were actually her former clients that have come off the street and now working with KSK and all the volunteers, these people are amazing. They come to help every day as well as during the weekends and even during holidays to come and give out food to all the homeless and the urban poor. Uh -huh. So what happens is that I ask her, how did she create such a miracle? She is indeed a miracle maker and she told me, find your passion and as well as to see what goal I can attain. Do not aim too high because we can take a step at a time and try to achieve. She started with just 20 packets being given a week and now it has got up to 180 packets of food being given out every single day and 750 on Saturday itself. What an amazing feat and look behind me. This is the labour of love from her and her team. And this is something that I look forward to, to be a miracle maker just like Dr. Ruby Kong. And I think I am a step closer to that. As I go on this journey to see and to meet with these miracle makers, I'm excited to find out who the next miracle maker I'm about to meet and to learn from. And with this, I'd like to urge you to join me on this truly remarkable journey to have a passion and to contribute, inspiring the lives of the others. So, see you next week and remember to tune in, same time, same place. Bye-bye. Your capability in listening itself is a great uh, uh, value. Listening. Listening. <laughs> you listen and uh, try to understand and in the same way you listen to your inner voice. Mm -hmm. And that inner voice is your conscience. Right. And that will carry you very far in life. Thank you. <laughs>